Okay, good afternoon, good evening, or even good morning, I guess, for some of you. Um, welcome to this week's uh, live analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and see the Tickmill um, welcome screen on your uh, on your screen, can you just type a Y in the chat box? And, uh, and we will get going. Okay, so before we get into uh, today's charts, um, as always, I want to pay attention to the uh, risk disclaimer and understand the inherent risk involved in trading any financial instrument. Um, secondly, um, the views expressed here today are, are solely mine. They are not representative of Tickmill and they do not constitute investment advice. Okay, so uh, that's the disclaimer and housekeeping out of the way. Um, just before we, again, before we jump into the charts, for those of you who are here for the first time, and I can see there are a bunch of you who are, um, my name is, is Patrick Munley. I have been involved in the markets for, uh, for 15 years now. Um, I wasn't always uh, involved in financial markets after I graduated. I uh, went to work in, the, in London in the city for a uh, public limited company, a uh, consulting firm, and, um, and after a few years there, I left with a couple of the other guys uh, who I worked with, and we did a startup, a, uh, a technology executive search firm, and uh, we experienced some pretty rapid growth over a four to five year period, and I eventually cashed in my equity stake in the business um, when we merged with another firm. And, um, and so I had a bunch of time on my hands and some chips to play with and, uh, and started to explore my, my passion for markets. I'd, uh, I'd had a front row seat to the dot-com boom and bust, seeing guys make and lose a fortune uh, quite literally overnight. And, um, and I'd always been interested in markets and had friends who'd gone to work um, in investment banks and hedge funds. And so um, I started to basically dabble slash gamble um, in the S&P 500, uh, day trade in the S&P 500, uh, in a market that was pretty much just going going north, and um, I caught some lucky early breaks, started to make some uh, solid and then really quite some significant gains. But when the market phase transitioned, <clears throat> I uh, I obviously without uh, without the the underpinning or anchoring of a trading plan. Uh, started to make some some rookie mistakes and um and ultimately that led to me um averaging down and losing positions to the point that i had a uh, experienced a six-figure loss which um which whilst uh, thoroughly gut-wrenching and, and devastating experience um fortunately at that stage it wasn't terminal for me but it was significant enough that i, I really had to take a step back and assess what it was i was doing um, and whether or not there was the potential for me to actually make a, a sustained income from trading, and um, and so I basically decided to you know take the take this more seriously, and I sought out a mentor um, through my personal network. I introduced to a guy in the states who worked with me for 18 months, two years, <clears throat> developing not just my my technical game, but most importantly my mental game. And, um, and really, it was a period where, by, by, through which I became far more self-aware and, um, and understood the psychological uh, requirements to making it in the markets. And um, so I developed a, uh, a trading plan, a business plan, uh, thoroughly back-tested and forward-tested, and I came back to the markets uh, January 2008. And um, and since then, on an annual basis, um, I've, uh, I've managed to deliver um, positive returns. On the screen at the moment, you can see um, performance since 2013. The reason why it's since 2013 is that's when I started um, a managed account service. Uh, initially, it was friends and family who uh, saw what I was doing and, and wanted, uh, wanted a piece of the action. And, um, and it's grown organically from there. It's now a, a multi million dollar portfolio that I manage um, and again my, you know the the whole drive there is this annual performance I'm not 
concerned by or um, or interested really so much in the outcome of individual trades. Um, for me, my focus is on the next hundred trades because I know that if I stick to my plan, I execute with excellence and focus on the process, then the, the outcomes will ultimately take care of themselves. And my, I'm looking for my edge to demonstrate itself over, uh, like I said, those next hundred trades really. Um, and you know this this is a, a big driver for me in terms of becoming you know being process orientated as opposed as opposed to goal orientated you know in any other um, commercial activity or commercial endeavor it's all about goals setting goals financial goals and setting you know new business goals and that sort of stuff whereas for me and for you know for, for the professional traders or successful professional traders I know we we're, we're about process and that's where our focus is, because if you get the process right, the, the returns take care of themselves. Um, and from the statistics here, the most important statistic for me is this uh, idea of, you know, I'm, I'm profitable seven, seven out of every 10 months. Um, and when I do lose, you know, the, my average loss in a month is 2.4%, is but my average gain is 8.1%. So it's almost three to one ratio. So you can extrapolate that down into into you know my individual trading performance and what what I'm looking to achieve in terms of um, profit. You know the important thing in trading is when you win is to make make more than you lose when you experience the loss. And you know I'm not uh, you know I'm I'm not here to um, to suggest that you know I'm winning. 99% of my trades and, and you know I've got a gold-plated Lamborghini in the garage um, you know I experienced losses and I experienced, I experienced strings of losses you know I've um, just last month April you know I had six or seven losers in a row um, but because of my my experience and you know I understand the process of trading the and I totally accept the fact that it's a numbers game and for me to get the reward, I just had to keep executing the trades when they set up. I was able to, to get back to close to, to scratch on the month. And, um, and I'm still up 9.3% uh, on the year to date. Um, so it really is that idea of focusing on process. And that's, um, that's a, a message I, I hammer home to, to the guys I, I work with on a daily basis. Um, so apart from the uh, trading, I have a couple of other projects. Obviously, I'm a resident market expert for um, Tickmill. I provide a daily market outlook and a, and a setup of the day. You can register on the Tickmill blog there to, to receive those in your inbox. Um, the other project I uh, spend a lot of my time involved in <coughs> is FX CareerSwap. We're a, uh, a leading online education, trading education firm with a, with a slight difference. We underpin our education and we believe so um, so vehemently in what in what we do and the quality of what we do that once you complete the process we'll actually give you a funded account with the opportunity to grow it from from 10k up to uh, up to two million dollars um, on a on a profit share basis at zero um, personal financial risk um, we have uh, interactive education modules there are 10 strategies that I use a combination of over the past 15 years that deliver uh, that have delivered my my returns um, and there's also a great community there of, of like-minded individuals who are all striving towards this idea of becoming a professional trader and um, and I'm involved in the what we have a team chat uh, heavily in that in uh, in helping to guide the guys and girls on the team through the process of, of making it as a professional trader um, we actually have at the moment a 14-day free trial um, offer a limited time offer for those who are interested in in trialing um, the service, and uh, and you can sign up using um, using a link. I'll post the link in the chat at the end for you, um, but uh, that can give you an opportunity to see what it is we're doing um, at FX Career Swap. So that's um, that's a flavour of where I'm coming from um, in terms of what I want to discuss today. Let's move on to the charts. This is the dollar index monthly chart. This is what we were looking at um, last week. And uh, we were looking to see if we've got that 
close below this uh, this trend line, and, um, and lo and behold, we did in the end. And um, and I suggested last week that we could we likely see some back and filling now. Um, that May has, has, from a seasonal perspective, tended to be um, very strong for the dollar. And I've had some uh, some dollar longs in play this week, and um, and we're back up. We're backing and filling as as I've um, anticipated. Um, ultimately, what I'm looking for. Uh, is the you know the, the vast amount of liquidity that are being uh, channeled into the market via the various uh, guises of the Federal Reserve? You know we're looking at three trillion dollars um, flooding uh, the markets over uh, this next period. I believe that that's going to lead to um, some dollar weakness. In, uh, in, in certainly, uh, I think we'll see maybe not during the summer months, but as we, maybe as we head into the election period uh, in the US, I think we'll start to see this dollar uh, have a bit of a wobble, and I'm, you know, I'm certainly looking to to trade that from the short side. Um, there are, if you look back through um, the recordings on YouTube, you know, I've posted these slides a bunch of times about where I see this these dollar cycles. Um, this is explaining the liquidity that's being um, plowed into the market and how that um, how that should uh, Ultimately, impact uh, this dollar, and we should see uh, we should see some certainly some trading trading opportunities on uh, on the short side of the dollar. Um, like I say, uh, we're now uh, after having these dollar longs. We're gonna I got a buy signal on Monday and um, I traded up into this trend line. I've uh, I've taken profit on those dollar longs, and I'm watching to see how we react now at this trend line. In a minute, we'll look at some of the majors, and you'll see they're all. At, well, certainly the euro and, uh, and cable are at this inflection point. We'll see we've had a, a break just above it there, running some stops. We'll see now if, uh, if today we get get a reversal in the dollar and, um, and potentially head lower. Now, if we get a close above the trend line and we take out the trend lines, I'll just show you those to you. <coughs> this is the trend line we're sitting on in terms of cable. We had a run higher earlier this morning on the BOE. We're now... Uh, now backing and filling a bit here, but if we can defend, or if bulls can defend this 123 area, then I see the potential um, for another leg up here and, um, and an attempt to uh, to challenge this uh, this 128 area. The 128 represents the 78.6% um, retracement of uh, of this decline. We've also got the monthly R2 up there and the weekly R2, but to get confirmation for this, I need to, get, what I'd like to see is a close back above um, the near-term volume weighted average price, so that's currently coming in around uh, around 124.20, so to get confirmation for this potential move, we'll need to see that close. If we don't get the close, if we fail below the, um, below the trend line here, um, then similar to the, the story in the dollar index, then we can uh, we can look for an initially an equality move, which would put us back down testing 122. And um, and if we if, fire, if buyers fail to to show up there, then uh, then we've got a lower downside objective here. 50% retracement, 161 extension of this structure um, puts us at 120. So we're at an inflection point, a decision point for the market. And, um, and we're going to see how that uh, how that plays out over the coming sessions. And similarly, in the euro, we're sitting at this trend line support. You can see the momentum studies here are also sitting on trend line support and starting to just tick back up a bit. So um, I like to pay attention to these trend lines in terms of the momentum studies, and um, and we'll see if there is an opportunity for um, for the bulls to step back in here in the euro. Um, as we're sitting on the uh, the monthly S1 and um, and this trend line support area, we haven't quite tested the volatility support bands, but we'll see how we uh, we trade over the coming sessions here. Obviously, um, with respect to the euro, I posted this in the team chat. We've got some massive uh, option expiries um, between 108 and 109 going off today and tomorrow in uh, and that's at the uh, 3 p.m. UK time. It's called the uh, the New York cut, and um, so we likely see a bit of range support here for the euro, based around hedging strategies by uh, market makers with respect to those options. So um, I've got a, I've 
put on an initial long here in the euro and I'm going to uh, going to use some of the profits available in the short side to, uh, to give me some wiggle room here and we'll see how uh, how we trade but if we can get a reversal certainly back up through 108.50 would be encouraging then I think we can head back up to test certainly back to that 109 um, where we get the, the these options rolling off tomorrow so I think we're in you know a 108 109 range at the moment however if we close if we close below 107.50 then again, similar to the, <coughs> the cable story, 107.50 would be, uh, that would be a bearish development. And, um, and certainly then we can, uh, we would we'd be looking at low uh, downside targets. So initially what we have in play would be a move back into these range lows here. So this would be an equality move versus this structure. You can get it actually off here as well. So yeah, this is, if we, if we take out 107.50 on a closing basis, that will be a bearish development for uh, for the euro. And then we need to be looking on the short side, trade initial target down to this uh, this 106.30. <coughs> the year to date lows would be uh, would certainly be pressured there. But um, like I said, at the moment with these options in play, we likely uh, we should see this this 108 support area prove to be um, prove to be sticky in the short term. And then we'll see how uh, how the market responds once these options have rolled off tomorrow. Obviously, we've also got non-farm payrolls coming up tomorrow. Um, we're expecting 2.2 million uh, job losses, a staggering figure. And um, we'll just have to see. I mean, if that number comes in, uh, if it comes in heavier than expected, then, uh, then I think that could uh, that could feed through into some. Uh, into some dollar weakness because that will obviously then suggest that the Fed are potentially going to have to increase their stimulus and, um, and that should, uh, should should potentially weigh on the dollar. So keep an eye on those, uh, those non-farm payrolls figures tomorrow. In terms of other markets I'm watching, um, the S&P 500 is, uh, is one that's on my radar at the moment. Um, let's go here and see. So yeah, what I'm what I'm looking at with the S&P is we've held um, some symmetry swing support and um, versus this this prior corrective move here, you can see we tested back down into that area and um, and got a reversal. If we pull it back further to this first leg here, you can see we um, we pretty much held it to the to the tick and um, and we're seeing push higher. Uh, watching this uh, 28, um, 28.70 on the closing basis, we'll take out that on that level of closing basis. Certainly, I think we can retest these highs at uh, 29.69. And ultimately, what I'd be looking for is is a run up into this um, this resistance zone. This again, 78.6% retracement of um, of the entire decline we've seen, and the 161 extension of the initial corrective structure. So this will be a key area for me in terms of looking at the potential for, for doing something on the short side. I've um, I played this over the past few weeks from both the long and the short side. I'm you know I'm not suggesting uh, that we you know we, I, no one knows what's going to happen. Okay, and this is an important concept in terms of trading. I don't need to know what's going to happen um, next for me to make money over the long term. But certainly if we get up into this area, I'd uh, I'd be looking at the opportunity to um, to do something on the short side. And I could see us retracing again. 50% of the move would be would be a natural occurrence. So um, you know, if we can get up there, uh, 3140, I can see us back trading into this 2660 area. Um, and who knows then? You know, again, another key decision point because uh, if if the bulls decide to step in, and you know, the coronavirus uh, pandemic news, you know, with these economies reopening, starts to uh, starts to look a bit rosier. Then um, you know all-time highs could be could be taken out. Um, that seems lower probability scenario at the moment, but certainly one that could be in play. And we'll have, again, the beauty of having the ability to analyse the markets in a consistent fashion um, gives you the the ability to market map. So you can prepare in advance for these scenarios. And um, and what the reason why? This style of analysis works effectively is, is that we're just using prior swings in the market. We're not coming up with ludicrous targets or, or ludicrous ideas in terms of where prices are going to go. We're using measured moves with, you know, if we accept the fact that the markets 
certainly rhyme if they don't necessarily repeat, then price action is the best guide for, um, for where things are, are likely to head. So if we can get this close back through um, 28.70, through take out these prior highs, this is the quality objective here at 28.99. So through 29, and then I think it's uh, it's a certainly target retest of highs on route to the 31.40. Now, if we believe or if we accept that the you know these this is uh, you know that's the bullish um, scenario in terms of the uh, the S and P. Then we want to. Then I certainly want to pay attention to what's going on um, in some of these yen crosses. The Aussie yen and the Kiwi yen have uh, have form in terms of tracking uh, equity markets. And you can see here, we're getting a bullish reversal, potential outside bullish reversal. We've got the RSI stochastic back down below 20. So in terms of momentum, there's plenty of scope here from the up for the upside. And we've got some upside targets similar to the idea. I just mentioned in terms of the S&P, we've got the 78.6% of tracing, we've got these prior, prior lows, we've got the equality objective versus this structure. So we could easily see now a run up here into, um, into this 72 area, uh, currently trading 68. So we need to get this bullish close here with the VWAP and um, there's the opportunity to, to take a look at longs targeting, um, targeting this 72 area. Similar story in the Kiwi Yen, nice bullish reversal from the range support here. And again, we've got these upside objectives. We've got the equality objective versus this swing from this swing low up into the 69.50. Again, 78.6% retracement on the, on the cards. We've got the monthly R3, we've got these prior lows here. So, you know, there's a decent, uh, decent chance that if we can get a good reversal here in terms of the Kiwi and those futures lift, the S&P 500 uh, takes out 29, then we can see this grind high up to uh, up, to, up towards this 70 area, currently trades 64.50. And again, the invalidation point for that idea would be uh, you know, taking out these, these swing lows. Um, so that's the Kiwi yen. Let's take a look at the Euro yen. Um, Euro yen has tested down into uh, three year lows, but what we note here is that again we've tested in the quality objective. So we have this uh, this leg, an equal leg down here, and we've pretty much hit it to the the, the pit there, and um, and we're trying to put in a uh, an inside bar reversal here. Um, in terms of my, in terms of the strategy, the you know the, the core swing strategy that I, I teach, the VWAP is is a bit dispersed here, so. This will be a price action play because at the moment, obviously, this candle is green without um, the proprietary indicators. If I take that off, you can see this candle is green. So, I mean, if we can get a bullish reversal here, closing back towards the highs, then, um, then in a pure price action strategy, again, using the analysis, the core analysis, and we've obviously, we're obviously trading into that two to three standard deviation um, VWAP support area. Then you know this setup has merits, and certainly one I'll be watching uh, on the close tonight. Um, the, and again, if if um, if we do see this euro yen reverse here, and it's you know it's still an if at this stage, then that should uh, should add some support to uh, to the euro dollar as well. So keep that in mind. Um, the Swiss yen. Is also one that I'm watching again. The Swiss yen has traded into its equality objective, and, uh, and is looking to find some support here. Really want to see a key reversal back up through this 109.50 um, to get uh, to get bullish there. But certainly there's a trade, and um, and what's the first target? Well, you just measure move, uh, use the measured move of the last uh, tick higher that we saw here in Swiss yen. So I mean, we could reasonably expect to move up. To that 111 area, certainly before um, you can see uh, renewed selling pressure. So that's what I'd be watching there in terms of the Swiss yen. Um, Kiwi and the Aussie are also on watch. Um, we're reversing here um, in the Kiwi, potentially putting in an outside reversal. And again, these commodity FX tend to trade with risk sentiment. So if we see an improvement in risk sentiment, these futures get get them, get, get moving today. Um, then this Aussie had, or would, could also have legs to the upside. We've got uh, an upside objective here at 64.48. That's the quality objective versus this structure. And um, 
and then let's just bring in the fib retracement so there's the swing high and again you can see that 78.6 percent as well so these these targets are certainly valid um, from my perspective in terms of uh, upside objectives to, to trade for um, let's take a look at the Aussie quickly so I mean I, again this this was a, a, a setup I, I, I've been in this trade this week short uh, ultimately break even exit just wasn't uh, wasn't really playing ball on the downside supported again because we haven't seen these this s p rollover that adds support to these commodity fx but the central tendency we've got a bullish monthly vwap but trading above the monthly pivot could take out the weekly pivot on a closing basis here so again there's a long opportunity here from a tactical perspective and um and where's our target well shouldn't be a surprise at this stage but uh what we're going to be looking for what i'm looking for is that um, is the equality objective? So again, bringing in that for uh, extension tools. So versus this structure here, you can see we have 67 on our on our radar. We've got these prior swing lows over here. So I mean, once we get up here, certainly I want to. I'll be looking at um, how we trade here because again, at this stage, you know, these this is still a corrective structure versus this impulsive decline. And, um, and certainly, what we can, what we could reasonably expect um, from from a test up here, is um, you know we could then see a 50% retracement, and um, and from there again, then we move into another decision point for the market. But this would um, this would certainly give this opportunity, and um, and then we'd again watching for these key inflection areas, watching how price responds, and then uh, and then entering once we get a, a price action confirmation. Um, as like I say, as uh, as with my core swing strategy, um, I think that pretty much covers the uh, the main opportunities I've got on the board at the moment. Um, so I'm watching euro, sterling, watching the dollar index, uh, all testing these these key trend lines at the moment. So I'm going to be looking for uh, opportunities to short the dollar here uh, if we can get if we can get price action confirmation. If they break, uh, if these trend lines get taken out, and the dollar uh, gather some steam let's just go back to the dollar chart in terms of the upside objectives if um if we are going if we if we do get going here and um and we hold uh, and we, we trade through this trend line uh, certainly 101.15 would be uh the next upside objective so symmetry uh <coughs> sorry equidistant swing quality move and if uh, if sellers don't show up here then we're going back to retest the highs um and if we if again uh if we take out those highs then there is actually a target a, a, yeah the quality of target up here at 106 obviously this would be uh inflicting significant pain on the markets um this type of dollar strength and again this will probably be a blow-off move to my in my mind and certainly i would expect that uh the fed and uh and certainly trump would uh would be doing a lot of jaw boning at that stage uh, with respect to dollar strength so I, you know I, from a strategic perspective um i'm still on the, I'm, I'm in the bear camp on the dollar um, but i you know I'm, i trade it tactically obviously if i when i get the when i get sell signals in the dollar i'm going to try and ride those trades because you never know which one it could be the the start of of this bigger decline in in the dollar um but you know i'm trading tactically around that idea at the moment uh, like I say, just uh, just all I've got <coughs> running at the moment is a euro long, closed out shorts in sterling, and um, and the euro. So that basically brings you up to speed with uh, with where I'm up to. Are there any questions? Are there any charts anyone would like me to take a look at that I didn't cover um, that, uh, that that could be of interest? You can just type them in the chat box, and I'll uh, I'll have a quick look at them for you. Or type an N in the chat box just so I know that you're uh, you're all awake. DBP AUD. Yes, I mean we uh, we're, we're rolling over here. The the, the Sterling Aussie uh, has taken out you know this this trend line here. Let's just 
you can see we've got, you know, we've had this trend line support being eroded. We came up to, to basically to make an attempt here to, to retest it from below and we've rolled over. It was inside candle here. So you could, you know, you can make the argument for continuation trade on the basis that the RSI stochastic is back up, testing that 80% level. So you've got momentum on your side. Um, and certainly, you know, the next, in terms of downside here, we could, uh, we could reasonably expect uh, an equality objective. So that will put us into this one, uh, 186 area. And you've got that uh, pivot cluster as well there. As, um, as downside magnets. Um, again, what, and, and the, the alternative scenario is that, you know, we, we base, what it doesn't, although it looks less likely at this stage, certainly, but if we did, for whatever reason, find some sort of support here, then, you know, we could, we could run back up, get that underside test, and still, um, it would still set up this, this downside move. Um, Equality objective even lower down at 180, um, but it, it doesn't look like that's going to be uh, that's going to be the scenario at this stage. And so probably break lower and make a move, make a move for this uh, 186. Good stuff, nice and Well done, um, Aussie Swiss. Aussie Swiss. Yeah, I mean so. This one again, with if you just look at the Aussie complex at the moment, it's pretty much green across the board here for the Aussie. So um, I think we're uh, we, we're on track here to certainly retest these these highs. Um, RSI stochastic is back down in the in the 20, 20 zone and positively diverging. So I mean the setup would suggest that uh, we're, we're probably going to take a look up here if um, if we bring in the Bit of retracement. So again, this idea of that 78.6% retracement zone. And um, what we don't have <laughs> really here though is um, you know, if we I guess we you could use that, but it's there's not a clear structure there to measure the um, the equality objective. But if we're looking at this prior swing here, for example, and we just overlay that there. Then, uh, then it looks like all roads point to a test of the 65, and obviously that would coincide with the Aussie making its move. So when you're looking at those crosses, it's always useful to to look at the major for um, for your guides, and you know we can see here that we've got uh, certainly got confidence up at this 67 level, and uh, and we'll see how we how we trade when we get up there. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Like I say. Uh, if you want to take advantage of the 14-day free trial uh, for the Trade Pro program, please uh, please do so. Uh, I'll post the link now in the chat, and, um, and you can sign up there, and uh, you can get. Well, I can't post the link. for whatever reason. I can't post the link, unfortunately. Um, but you can see the the link there. It's fxcareerswap.uk uh, forward slash uh, forward slash trade hyphen pro hyphen free hyphen trial hyphen Patrick and, uh, and take advantage of the free free trial and, uh, and access all the, the information and uh, have access to me on a, a daily basis for the next 14 days. Okay, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Guys and girls, thanks very much for your time and I uh, hope this was uh, helpful and I'll see you all the same time next week. <laughs>